is endometriosis an autoimmune disease? This is a very common and popular question, and we're gonna talk all about it in today's video. Endometriosis is often classified as an autoimmune disease because the symptoms of common autoimmune diseases and endometriosis are very similar. Chronic pain, inflammation, fatigue, flare-ups that you don't expect and they happen at any time and now you feel awful. Very common with chronic illnesses, autoimmune disease, and endometriosis. But here's the thing. The medical community does not actually classify endometriosis as an autoimmune disease. Here's some notes. I want you to understand why. Mostly because there's no definite cause of the disorder to justify placing it in this category. Now for you endo sisters out there, you're rolling your eyes because we still don't know exactly what causes endometriosis. Endometriosis, for um, those of you who don't know, is when uterine tissue and cells grow outside of the uterus and they cause all sorts of problems, cysts, nodules, scar tissue, adhesions. They can grow on any organ of the body, not just reproductive organs. My endometriosis grows on my bowels, on my stomach, on my kidneys, on the lining of my abdominal wall, and all of my reproductive organs. It causes immense pain, discomfort. Um, it can cause IBS symptoms, infertility, back pain, leg pain. Oh my gosh, the list goes on forever. Endometriosis is a very serious disease that affects one in 10 women that we know of. Some say it could be even higher, maybe as many as three or four out of every 10 women. So, because we don't exactly know what causes endometriosis, medical professionals are saying it can't technically be classified as an autoimmune disorder, but it is absolutely related. There are tons of autoimmune disorders and diseases and the medical community is still trying to figure out how to treat them, what causes them, why that they can be so debilitating to one person but not the next person, and we have a long way to go. So if you are suffering from an autoimmune disorder and chronic illness, um, my heart goes out to you. We're all in this together. We are all struggling <laughs> with our own medical issues, but we're all here coming together to learn and talk about it and the dialogue is just half the battle to getting to the solution in the end. So we cannot place endometriosis in the category of autoimmune disorders, but it is related to autoimmune disorders. And sometimes there is some medical evidence that those who have endometriosis might be at a higher risk of contracting other autoimmune disorders. So let's go through a couple of them. I have my notes. I wanna make sure I get everything right for you because this is such an important um, and highly controversial topic because autoimmune diseases are widely debated amongst the medical communities, the holistic communities, the naturopathic communities. I mean, it's, it's quite the thing. So here are a couple different autoimmune disorders and how endometriosis might be classified in a similar category or share similar symptoms. So endo and rheumatoid arthritis. They're both conditions with similar characteristics of that chronic inflammation. Painful, swollen joints, flare-ups at different times, right? That's very similar to women with endo. Pain, progressive flare-ups that come and go, um, especially in our reproductive organs, but it can be all over the body like I explained. And that's very, very similar with rheumatoid arthritis. Unfortunately, rheumatoid arthritis is more prevalent in women because its risk is increased when hormonal and reproductive factors are present. And how it relates to endometriosis is that those with rheumatoid arthritis, along with endo, are encouraged to change your diet in order to manage symptoms. If you're curious about the endometriosis diet, the endo diet, tons of videos on the YouTube page, go to kiafa.com, lots of free blogs and resources about an anti-inflammatory endo diet. If you have rheumatoid arthritis, it could also be very beneficial and helpful to start managing some of your symptoms and your inflammation the exact same way. Similar to endometriosis, lupus often occurs, most often in women, with hormonal and reproductive issues. And it seems to affect more commonly um, women in childbearing years, age ranges 20 to 40 years old, seem to be more heavily affected by lupus. Again, endo is not an autoimmune disorder, but sometimes it can look like other autoimmune disorders. So continue to do your research. If you're suffering from both, 
Start keeping track and of a calendar or a schedule to manage your symptoms so that you can tell, oh, this is rheumatoid arthritis, oh, this is my lupus, oh, this is my endo. It's gonna be much more helpful when you go to a physician for them to be able to treat the specific diseases and symptoms if you keep track of them. Allergies, allergies, allergies. Women who have endometriosis are at a higher risk of having other allergies. And I am a prime example of this. I don't know why, I don't know how, the medical research isn't really telling me that much, but here's the thing. If you have endometriosis, there's a good chance you have allergies or food sensitivities. I am allergic to bakers and brewers yeast, I'm allergic to gluten, and I'm allergic to cow's milk. I'm pretty good with sheep and goat milk, cow's milk. Simple blood test told me all about this. Changing my diet has changed my life. So if you have endo, be aware that you may have other allergies that you're not even aware that you have. Go get treated for food allergies. Um, see what's going on inside your body. For whatever reason, endometriosis, the inflammation, your, our body's reaction to the disease puts you at an increased risk for allergies. It's what the medical professionals say. I don't know why, I wish I could change it, but let's be smart about our bodies and investigate so we can know how to fix them. So what are you supposed to do if you have endometriosis and an autoimmune disease? First of all, I am not a doctor. I did not go to medical school. I am not a physician or a naturopath. Um, though I wish I could be an amazing healer, I am not. So please, 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 I, I'm not a doctor. Go talk to your healthcare professional before changing your diet or starting any new healthcare practice. Um, I wanna make sure you are happy and healthy. That's what counts. But a similar recommendation for autoimmune disorders and endometriosis is doo -doo -doo -doo, changing your diet. I cannot stress this enough, how much of a factor this will make in your endometriosis symptoms. It has changed my symptoms and decreased them by at least 90% following the endo diet. I'm mostly plant-based. I don't eat gluten, added sugar, or cow's milk products. No, so no cow's dairy, right? It has fundamentally changed how I feel every day. No more brain fog, bloat, the weight gain, the weight fluctuation. I think it has helped my pain level. I think it's helped my blood flow. I mean, I cannot explain to you how good I feel following this diet. Um, and I say that just to encourage you to explore it and see if it may be right for you. And the reason this works for endometriosis along with autoimmune disorders is because both are rooted in inflammation. Holistic science, naturopathic doctors will tell us, and, and I think Western medicine and um, the amazing physicians that we have are catching up and realizing that inflammation is the root of all disease. Okay, that sounds a little heavy dippy, but inflammation can wreak so much havoc on our systems and on our bodies. So when you change your diet, you change your body's ability to heal. Holistic healing isn't some like grab your crystals and like wave to the moon. Holistic healing is about giving your body the opportunity to do its job. It was fundamentally created to heal, to live, to be vibrant, and to sustain you, to sustain life. If you give it food and fuel so it can be life-giving, life-altering, it will heal and you could feel so much better. So you really, really, really want to stick to that anti-inflammatory diet. Again, kiave.com, lots of endo diet, anti-inflammatory diet things. Really look into it. See if it's right for you. Talk to your doctor. Um, I think it's going to do a world of difference. Number two, hydrate, hydrate, hydrate. Women are chronically dehydrated for whatever reason, especially those of us who live out west. I'm in Colorado, super dry here. I try to drink 90 to 120 ounces a day in water. Why is this good? It's good for bone health, joint health, our muscles. It lubricates everything, right? Our brain and our hearts are about 73% water. Our body's 60% water. You need water to sustain your life. It will make you feel better, clearer. Your brain will function more, um, will function better. It'll help digestion. It'll make your skin glow. It'll help fine lines and wrinkles. Hydrate, hydrate, hydrate. Very important for autoimmune, very important for endometriosis. And last but not least, we all say this, but this is so true. Finding ways to lower your stress 
and improve your physical movement. When we move our bodies, we release feel-good hormones and chemicals to our brains. We increase blood circulation. We allow our bones and our joints and our muscles, right, to move freely and to be mobile and to have longevity and agility. We cannot do that if we're just sitting stationary all day. You have to move, stretching, yoga, walks, running, workout class, hit classes, boot camps, doesn't matter what it is, physical movement is key. And what that does is it will help you de-stress your body. When you work out, those endorphins and happy feel-good feelings are released and you feel better. Scientifically, biologically, your stress levels, your cortisol goes down, down. You can fundamentally decrease stress on a biological level if you exercise. Yeah, that's a big deal. The theory and the truth behind it is very, very real. If you wanna distress and you wanna feel better, which you need, mental health is highly important when you're struggling with endo, autoimmune issues, chronic pain, work out, move your body, do what feels right for you. Be present in this season of your life. Listen to your body, understand what it needs, give it life nourishing foods, hydrate, work out, be physical, move your body will start to heal and feel better for you. You have everything you need. Summer is a great time to get started, but no matter what time of the year, make it a priority to put you first. Put any comments, questions you have um, in the comment section below. Share this with a friend, a girlfriend, a family member, a man who needs to understand autoimmune and endo a little bit better. We have to stay connected and communicate to make a change in this world. And until next time, live, laugh, lube.